Right, this is my presentation to Virtual Expo Ham Radio today. I can't remember. I'm putting it on YouTube as well, just because there's a lot of effort has gone into this, and I think it's important that you guys see this as well. But I'll cut the beginning out, you see, for the for the uh, for the presentation. So here we go. Well, very good day, everybody. My name's Callum from DX Commander. I'm an um, amateur radio operator. M0 MCX. I've been in M2 Amateur Radio for about 20 years and I own an antenna company called DX Commander. A lot of you may have seen me on YouTube, mostly relating to ham radio antennas, because that's my favourite thing. We buy these big fancy radios, don't we? But uh, because that's the modern culture. We don't build stuff, you know, whether you like it or not. We buy this stuff, all right? But the one thing we can really change is our antenna in our backyard, our back garden. So that's what I'm into because I was amazed the first time I put up my first antenna. It was a 40 meter dipole, a blooming thing, thing worked. I couldn't believe it, I was proud as punch. I was very junior at the hobby, you know. So to avoid any confusion as we go through this presentation, let's just remind ourselves that a piece of coax um, is a wire, it looks like a wire, it has a centre conductor, normally made of copper, could be stranded, solid, whatever else, and then we have this braid and various shield, shielding, that goes around the outside. And if we were making an antenna, normally we've got one side of the antenna, like a dipole for instance, that would be one side of the dipole and the other side of the dipole would come off the braid. That's, you know, whether we need a choke, ballon, whatever, at the feed point is beyond the scope of this. What I want to do is I'm going to head into verticals, dipoles and loops. The reason is, is because with very few components, we can build all sorts of things and have a lot of experimental fun at different heights off the ground without buying towers, bits of aluminium and all that sort of stuff. Go on Amazon, eBay, whatever else, buy yourself a hundred meters of a, you know, two millimeter thick, whatever that is in American, um, one mil equipment wire, uh, and that will keep you going for a good couple of months, all right? So let's just do our first antenna, which will be a dipole. So our 40 meter dipole is gonna be have quarter wave legs. That means if it's 40 meters, which is an average, the 40 meter band is actually about 42 meters. Seven, let's say 7.2 megahertz. Let's keep it simple. Let's have legs of 10 meters long and you'll find that will resonate about seven megahertz, whatever. Again, it's a, we've got the braid and the, the center of our coax feeding it at the top here. And let's put it at six meters above the ground and six meters above the ground is about 21 feet. All right. I'm doing this because I've got it in software and we'll show you the plots and what that'll do. But a straight dipole gives us a tune on its primary harmonic of the design frequency. So in this case, it'd be seven megahertz. We wouldn't get 14, but we would get 21 because what's happening with a dipole, we're getting resonance on every other harmonic. So every third. So again, we're not getting uh, 28 we're not getting 28 but we're getting I think 35 for instance and so on and so forth that'll also tune on the six meter band 50 ish megahertz interesting let me show you another basic antenna that I think you can build we could take a loop could be a triangle could be a square could be a circle triangles have got great benefits and I'll show you that in a minute but if we just take our um a square loop, you know, you've got a tree here, another tree, you know, a bit of a house here, whatever else. You could feed it in the middle there. You will need a four to one ballon. A loop will give you a full wavelength length loop. So in other words, we're heading down to 10 meter per leg, roughly, or that could be 11 and that could be nine. It could be a funny shape, you know. Each of these 10 meters long because it's a full wavelength. All right. Again, if it's six meters above the ground, you will find that will be a lovely little antenna, but it's automatically resonant on all the bands. So if our design design frequency is seven megahertz, we will get 14, we'll get 21, we'll get 28. 
we will get the six meter band as well 50 ish weirdly enough that'll be resonate on about 145 146 megahertz as well really good fun as a basic antenna both of these at six meters above the ground by the way are what i would class almost as envis antennas we haven't quite got the height for 40 meters and interesting enough if that's six meters 21 feet off the ground for the 40 meter band then that's exactly the same as being 40 feet or 12 meters off the ground if it was a 20 meter antenna of course a 20 meter antenna are going to have slightly shorter legs they'll be five meters long but we can build a fan dipole as well to make that resonant on more than one band loops are good fun triangular loops are even more fun it's a triangle not a square particularly if you feed it in one corner i'll show you that in software in a minute verticals how to build a vertical you get your regular apple tree you throw a piece of wire up that's a quarter of a wavelength long in terms of its length and i can tell you now if that was on 20 meter band that would be 4.95 meters long plus a six centimeter fold back so go up and then come back down six a little bit of tape here you'll be able to put some string or a bit of cord between there and a tree and you could hold that up straight the center of your center conductor of your coax goes straight up the bottom of it and then you'll have some radials so again if you buy your 100 meters of uh, equipment wire any wire by the way as long as it's not steel wire which ungalvanized or it's not stainless steel marine steel wire which is coated in plastic so it doesn't rust not so good stainless steel is all right galvanized wire just wire you use to hold your runner beans up in the backyard you will find that it's galvanized you will find it'll all work by the way any wire will be fine so a quarter of wavelength that's fine as well they've all got different benefits and i'm going to show you that now oh by the way can you multi-band this well you can but what would happen is similar to our exactly the same as our dipole uh, we'll get seven we won't get 14 we'll get 21 we won't get 28 we'll get 35 and we'll also get 50 megahertz okay so they're the three bands you would get on a 40 meter vertical so which will be about 10 meters long uh, if it's a 20 meter vertical the next harmonic is outside the hand bands so anyway good stuff eh let's uh, head off into the software now this is called MMANA. Uh, it's the Mini NEC engine. It was rewritten in C++, I think. And I'm going to open the 40 meter dipole. This is exactly the same one as we drew a minute ago on the, on the paper. And I can hit the start button now. Forget all these numbers because I've been mucking around with it. Six meters, 21 feet off the ground. And, and I said that there was, it's a bit of an envis antenna and we can see why because if on the right hand side we've got our elevation view on the left hand side we've got our uh, plan view so the left hand side is the bumblebee view if we had our little glasses special rf glasses we could see the concentration of rf would be right in the middle and it would go out and out and out and out so that's the left hand side and then the right hand side here is the um, the pavement view you know if you could stand and take a knife and cut the whole plot in the middle that's what you would see but you can by clicking and holding the mouse we can measure things we can come down to five degrees off the horizon which it says it up here 175 degrees i'm getting minus 10.4 bananas all right it's minus 10.4 something it's called dbi but let's because it's relative to something if you just remember the minus 10.4 when we fire up another antenna you see we'll be able to compare minus 10 to plus three or minus six or whatever else your average joe soap um apple tree vertical is going to give you about minus three four minus five okay depending on the number of radials out of scope for this presentation but um minus five is a good datum point 
for low angle takeoff why five degrees off horizon because most of our dx is arriving between about three and eight degrees sporadic e maybe up to 10 15 it's harder and harder to get gain low down that's why i measure everything at five degrees because that's the toughest all right otherwise we can we can con ourselves oh look at 25 degrees it's great yeah but we're not talking to anybody at 25 degrees unless it's during the day on 40 meters where you're bouncing up and down 300 miles to your friend around the corner all right so i can press this button here and you can see a little we can zoom this a little bit and it'll say oh yes very nice callum um the difference by the way between north south and east west in this configuration is only and let's say 45 degrees that's its default 6.2 there 3.2 there so north south or east west we've got on average 3 db on your average joe soap dipole there's about 3 db difference you would never know effectively it's a bubble of rf it's almost omnidirectional only 3 db now some people would debate the debate that with me because 3 db is like double the power uh but i challenge most people unless it's marginal they would never know what 3 db is well let's just have a little bit of fun with this plot and let's just raise it up two meters at a time let's go to eight meters above the ground there's eight meters not much difference there's 10 meters there's 12 meters you see the tops flattening off the sides are coming out a bit so about 30 something feet here's 14 meters so that's about 40 feet the flats the top is now starting to flatten out so 16 meters getting on for i don't know nearly 50 feet 48 feet something like that now the top is starting to dip isn't it so here's 18 meters on the 40 meter band so we are nearly at half a wavelength tops going in a couple of fingers are starting to develop look and there is half a wavelength all right so half a wavelength you can see that the tops dipped right down and the fingers are fully developed at half a wavelength so it doesn't matter that could be on the 40 meter band or it could be at 10 meters off the ground for the 20 meter band all right and you can see if we just come down now 175 degrees minus 2.9 and this is what it looks like as a as a far field plot it's got to a full wavelength off the ground so this could be any dipole at a full wavelength off the ground we've now got more fingers have started to develop so on this is the sort of pattern you'd start to see on vhf let's go to two wavelengths off the ground two wavelengths and here's all the fingers developing these of course in here are nulls but at 10 wavelengths off the ground it looks something like this and these are all the fingers and this is the sort of thing if you had a dipole on the two meter band you'd probably only be hearing the very very first lobe and then you get a tremendous null that's 10 wavelengths off the ground okay so that's the uh, the dipole. Don't want to go down square loops. Let's head straight into triangular loops. Square loops are just a bit boring, all right? But take it from me, a square loop would give you a far field pattern of something like this. It's slightly more envis. So in other words, you're getting it, you're getting more RF going straight up than you are going out, and you can we can demonstrate that by holding the cursor down till we get 175 degrees off the other horizon. So it's five degrees off the horizon, minus 11.8. We're at minus. It says it here. We were at minus 10 something a minute ago, weren't we? We're getting a nice bubble of RF, lovely bubble of RF on a triangle. Now we know that our dipole wouldn't resonate on 14 but on this one we do get a resonance of 14 so i'll say 14 point uh point two five, and we can see we're getting you know reasonable swr i'm using a four to one ballon here remember this is our uh, far field plot and is there any dx potential for this so the view is my feed point is on the right hand side of this plot here on the left I'm getting minus 6.2. Bear in mind, I'm only 21 feet off the deck, 6 metres. 
minus 6.2. Not bad, actually. You know, you can you can get a whole continent there. It's not so bad off the top, not bad off the back. By the way, as we raise this, and we'll do this now because I'll accelerate through this presentation. As we raise this up a little bit, let's just keep adding a couple of meters, just over six feet to each one. And we'll go to the plot and we'll just see what happens. Going back down to five degrees again, we were at um, minus six. We started at minus 10. I'm now at minus four and a half. So it's a double wavelength triangle. OK, double wavelength. And uh, all sorts of things start happening. Let's actually go up to 40 feet. Could you fit a 40 foot triangle in your backyard? Elevation five and uh, zero. So we are now 10 dB. So that's like going from 50 watts to 500 watts. All right, it's the same. On receive as well, by the way. You're getting extra receive power as well. So that's a double size loop because that's 20 meters. Same height, let's go to say 28. So this is 28.5, I don't know. This is a quadruple size loop now. What sort of effect is that gonna have at five degrees off the horizon? Uh, 7.5 dBi, so we're 17 dB, better than we were a minute ago, or six meters off the ground. In fact, even better, I think. Interesting stuff. Triangular loops are great fun. I had what we call a mega loop, mega loop. Just search YouTube, mega loop, DX commander, and I'll do the, the whole nine yards. That was at 60, 70 feet, and it was a 160 meter loop. And we, we're getting the strangest gain pattern like this, but multiple, you know, we were getting every half hour deep gains going out. Call CQ on, you know, 15 meters on our dead band. Someone would come back to you. That was a really good experimental fun antenna. Yeah, very good. Okay, so verticals. All right, so let's have a look at, say, a stock vertical. Now, I've got um, my 18-meter Nabula here. So this is uh, a multi-element. So if we take our vertical here, just like our dipole, what we can do is we can put more than one element on. So we've got... Uh, let's say that is 10 meters long for the 7 megahertz band. We could put a half size one on for 20. We could put another one on for 10. Interestingly enough, our 40 meter one would give us 15 as well. Anyway, we could multi band this by basically creating a fan vertical, which incidentally is what DX Commander is. All right. I accidentally invented, rediscovered, whatever the expression is, a few years ago. And that's what my. I, Pay the bills by selling DX commanders now, right? So this is actually the Nabula. So the, the, the biggest element here is actually our 80 meter vertical, right? Because it's, it's a big one, but it's fundamentally the same. So let's go to four, seven point, I don't know, one five. I think I've tuned it in software form, give or take. And now this has got quite a good radial screen. I think it's about 50 or 60 radials down. Um, but you see no RFs going straight up. It's all going out, isn't it? So we can we can measure this now by coming down the side, coming to 175. We're getting an omnidirectional minus 2.2. It says it right here, minus 2.2. Um, but all around, okay? Which means you're also picking up your neighbor's fridge, you know, very well, right? <laughs> so one of the way out one of the ways out of that is most radios. Not a 7300, I think, which a lot of people have got, but like a TS590, most half decent radios have got a little receive jack in the back. A little old, old bit of coax out to the backyard, put a loop on the ground, cost you 10 bucks. Loop on the ground, a little binocular, uh, you can buy it, all right? Loop on the ground, Google it. You can have a fantastic receive antenna then, but a tremendous transmit antenna. So this, uh, this would tune on all frequencies, 14.25, because it's a fan dipole, but vertical. So exactly the same again. Look, and here it is, uh, minus 3.1. Heavens, this will even do 3.75. I think I've got it tuned for. No, nope, press the wrong button. And there it is on 80 meters. Will you try and get minus 1.4 dB on on 80 that is a very big you want some dx in the middle of the night on 80 meters 
very difficult on unless you've got a couple of very high trees you know and you're looking at probably over 100 feet to achieve that so if i can leave you with one two challenges one would be to build your apple tree vertical get take your apple tree get your five meters of wire a little loop tennis ball and a bit of cord throw it over put the rest of the radials on the ground connect that to the ground screen of your coax self amalgamating tape and have some fun for a few days that's the first thing and the other thing i would do always is um, get yourself a triangle up lovely triangle with a four to one ballon absolutely tremendous nothing like it at all okay well i'm gonna put my headphones on now because uh, although this is pre-recorded i want some sort of continuity because <laughs> apparently it's open for questions now which i think is live this is pre-recorded this bit so my name's callum from dx command i'll see you on the q a but in the meantime all the best right now back to youtube that was my uh, presentation which i released the day after this has gone live because apparently there's people paying twelve dollars or something to watch this i'm not getting paid for this i just do it for the fun of it all right hopefully that was a bit of fun for you i'll see you on the next one um this video might be interesting for you well it's the next one so you better watch it see you next time bye for now